Hi everyone and welcome to the Laser Channel where we learn, create, and share. My name is Greg and in this video I'm going to be checking out the JL7 Laser Machine by Wattsker. Thanks for joining me for another video on the Laser Channel. In this video, I'm going to be covering the JL7 laser machine. We're going to check out the contents of the box, how long it took me to assemble the machine, and then we're going to jump straight away into the software by creating a couple of projects so that we can see this machine in action, creating some fun projects. First up, I'm going to empty all the contents on my table and we'll check out everything that's included. The machine kit includes sample material of some cardstock of various sizes and two pieces of bass plywood. The JL7 is equipped with a 10 watt laser module, a spare lens, there's a power supply, a USB cable, and various tools for assembling the machine. There's a TF card with USB card reader, and there's a number of zip ties to tidy up the machine there's three booklets included. The first one is the user installation for assembling the machine, and then a nice thick book for the user manual for operating the machine, and at the very top is the software manual for CutLab X, which is what I'm going to be using to make today's projects. My kit also includes the Air Assist kit, there's some airline, the power adapter, and of course, some safety glasses. And finally, the framework of the JL7. We'll see that the subsections of the frame are already pre-assembled and the belts are installed and pre-tensioned with only the framework needing to be assembled. This is a very nice and complete kit that, by the way, was very well packaged. Next up, let's get this thing assembled so that we can start making those sample projects. While I assemble the machine off camera, I am going to be running a stopwatch on my mobile device so that I can share with you how long it took to assemble the machine. It took me 34 minutes to fully assemble the machine. The assembly of the machine went, well, mostly smoothly. The smooth part was assembling the framework. It was very quick and the manual was very clear and concise. I especially liked the corners of the machine. They interlock together, providing a self-squaring assembly of the machine, further speeding up the assembly. It's when I got to the wiring harness of the machine that I felt that the manual could have done a better job with larger pictures and more pictures to clearly show how the routing of the wires went. I ended up going back a couple of times and undoing some of the wiring that I had to reroute it so that it more closely matched what was in the manual. And I had to reference several different pictures to get kind of an idea of how that routed. I think had that gone just as smoothly as the assembly of the frame, I think this entire machine would easily be assembled in under a half hour. The other area that I felt could have gone a little bit smoother was the installation of the air assist kit, or specifically the airline. Now I know it's pretty straightforward that the airline has to run from the pump up to the laser module. I'm certainly very familiar with that, but if there's somebody that's totally new to laser machines, they might find it a little bit confusing. When I routed the airline, I just kind of piggybacked the wiring harness that goes up to the laser module, and that seemed to make quite a bit of sense. One thing that I did find is when I slipped the air line onto the air nozzle at the end of the laser module, I found that the air line tube didn't fit very tightly, so I ended up putting a zip tie on there to make sure that the air line doesn't fall off during a project. But outside of that though, I had all the screws, all the fasteners that I needed, and all the parts fit together correctly. Now that the machine is all assembled, this is a great opportunity to hit some of the features on the JL7, starting out with the big three, the price, the power, and the work area of the machine. For the price point, I call the JL7 a value-priced machine. 
There's certainly machines that are much lower priced than this, but this machine with the air assist kit comes in well under 500 US dollars. And if you go to the manufacturer's website, you'll also see that there's some coupons for additional money off. The power level of the laser module comes in at 10 watts, and this provides a nice balance of engraving detail while still being able to cut through a lot of thinner materials. The work area of the machine comes in at 400 by 400 millimeters. I convert that over to 15.75 by 15.75 inches, and that work area is right on par with today's laser machines. There's a maximum of 20,000 millimeters per minute engraving speed, again, converted over to millimeters per second, that is 333. Computer connection can be made by USB, Wi-Fi, or use the included TF card for offline engraving. Focusing the laser is easy with the built-in focus lever on the laser guard. There's even a tilt safety shutoff. Tilt the machine more than 15 degrees and the machine stops. There's certainly a lot more features on this machine and if you'd like to check that out in further detail, I'll have a link in the video description. In just a minute, we're going to power up the machine and connect up to the software, which is going to be a great segue to cover the compatible software with the machine, which is going to be the free laser gerbil software, MSK app, or the paid version of Lightburn software. For today's video though, I'm going to be using my new favorite free software, which is Cut Lab X. I have Cut Lab X installed on my computer and this is what the landing screen looks like. There's a number of different uh, files that we can download and use and we're gonna use one of those for the second project. But for the first project, I would like to create my own project. And for this, I'm going to go over to the left-hand side of the screen and click on this. And this immediately takes me into the application software and let's go on a very quick tour. On the left-hand side, I'm going to have all of my drawing tools. Across the top, I'm going to have all of my alignment tools. And then on the far right-hand side, this is going to be all my cut and engraving settings and layer control. Across the bottom, I have all these colored boxes, and these are going to correlate with the different layers that I would create in a project. It's a great way to help me keep track of what layers are cutting and what layers are being engraved with different settings. I think the only thing I need to do now is plug the USB cable into my computer, and I'm now ready to power on the machine with the software open and Cut Lab X will automatically connect up to the machine. There's no buttons that I have to push. And this is one of the great things that I absolutely love about Cut Lab X is the software automatically connects to the machine and also Cut Lab X, it's free. Wow, just like that, on power up, the machine automatically homed, there's already movement on the machine, and when I come down here, we're going to see that I am already connected. We'll also see that my workspace updated from the default space in the software to now show the 400 by 400 work area that this JL7 machine has. So just by powering on the machine, the software is already connected, and I don't know of another software program that is this easy to connect up to a laser machine. The first project, I'm going to do a simple text engraving and a line cutout. For the text, I'll head over to this icon, and that brings up the sub screen, and I can type in my text. From here, I can also change a different font type. I think I like this one, that looks good. The next thing I'd like to do is draw an oval. And I'll see that it's a little bit offset. I'm going to make sure that my cursor is selected. I'm gonna select everything. And using the alignment tools across the top of the screen, I'll choose align to horizontal center. 
and we'll see that the text shifted ever so slightly. And now when I align vertical center, we're gonna see that now everything looks perfect. That looks good. I'm going to reselect the text and grab the corner and actually make that a little bit larger and reselect everything and make sure that everything is all aligned. That's pretty cool. I'm going to select just the text and let's get some settings. So I'm going to go over to this tab here and change the mode from line to fill. And my speed, I think that I will try 6,000 millimeters per minute. Maximum power of 80% line interval, that looks good. The other thing I'm going to do is while I've got this big black oval here, I'm going to put that on a different layer. I'm gonna make sure that that is now on layer one and it's now on a line, so it will be doing a cutout. And this, I'm going to slow this way down to 600 millimeters per minute. I'm gonna run this at 95%. And the number of engraving times or the number of passes, I like to do two passes just to make sure that I cut all the way through. This looks good and I can hit the preview button and that will allow the laser to trace out the outside perimeter of this project. That way I know where to place my work material within the machine. And by doing that, I realized that this project is really large and I wanna make a much smaller project. I'm going to select everything and make it much, much smaller. I'll move this about in the middle of the work area. That way it's gonna be easier for me to film this for all of you to watch. That looks good. I can now take the aluminum plate that comes with the machine. I'm gonna place that underneath where my laser project's going to be. And I'm going to use one of the two basswood plywoods included with the kit to make this project. We're also going to see, I took some blue painter's tape and I taped down that black backer board onto the work surface. And on top of that backer board, I taped my project material. That way, none of those materials shift during the project. And I'm ready to hit the start button for this very first project. And just like that, the first project's complete. Let's go make another one. Cut Lab X is a very quick and easy way to start creating fun projects. For the next project, I'm going to click on the home button and this is going to take me back to the landing screen that we first saw. And I've already logged in to Cut Lab X. It's a free account that gets created and I am going to pick one of these projects here like this keychain pendant It'll give me a larger view of it and it will tell me the material that they have provided the settings for and the price is zero. And when I click on buy, it's going to ask me or to confirm if I wanna buy it. It's free and I haven't typed in any credit card numbers and it's loading in and it gives me a nice confirmation message. And I can click on use in the bottom corner of the screen and it's going to automatically load this free project in to my software. And I'll scroll wheel in and zoom in a little bit. And when I click on the black border and my cuts and layers, we're going to see that that is going to be a cut layer. And here's my speed that they've already picked out for me. And they're going to be using one pass, a maximum power of 100%. When I click on layer six, we see that it is set to fill and they've upped the speed to 500 millimeters per minute with one pass. And all I'm going to do is move this project so that it is over the existing work material that I still have within the machine.
Project 2 is all complete and it looks great. These first two projects went so quickly, I think we have some time to do a third project. Back inside Cut Lab X, I'm going to go over to the file folder and I'm going to reuse a file that I've already used in the past. And I'll click on open and it's already going to ask me if I want to replace the white background to make it transparent. And yes, I do. And the reason why I want to replace that white background with a transparent one is many quality lasers just like this one will see that white color as something that it will very lightly engrave. So not only is it going to slightly mark my work material, it's just going to add extra time onto the project. I'll select the object and we'll check out the settings that are being used. And once again, this 5,000 millimeters per minute seems to be a pretty good speed. I only need to do one pass and a power level of 80% seem to work pretty good on the first two projects and we'll use it again on this third project. We'll also see that the mode has been changed to monochromatic or simply black and white but I can also use some different methods here which would be better suited for doing an actual photograph from like a camera or something. But I like the way that these settings look. The third project's all complete and I love all the detail. This is absolutely stunning. Having ran several sample projects, I have some initial impressions to share with you, starting off with the performance of the machine. This thing ran very smoothly and very quietly. This thing is just absolutely cool to watch running. I hope that you're able to pick that up when you're watching this video. And speaking of performance, the air assist pump does a great job of providing enough air when I'm either engraving or definitely when I'm cutting. And the great thing about that air assist is not only does it allow me cleaner, deeper cuts, it also allows a fresh supply of air going past the lens to keep it clean and keep it cool, meaning it's going to last longer and far less time in between cleanings. The airline hose is also very soft and very pliable and it bends very easily so it doesn't impede the movement of the laser head. I had a lot of fun creating this content for all of you. If you like this video, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, or ring that notification bell. Not only is it a great way to support the laser channel, it's an awesome way to connect content like this with other great viewers just like you. Well, until we meet again in the next video, learn, create, and share.